I'd like to bring the uh, September 12th planning zoning meeting to order. Will everybody please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with justice for all. Roll call, please. Commissioner Morbido? Here. Commissioner Zarmi? Here. Commissioner Coletta? Here. Commissioner Simons? Here. Commissioner Keller? Here. Chairman Fluche? Here. Thank you. You have a quorum. Okay, just a couple of announcements. Anyone who has not yet signed in, please do so at the table located in the lobby. Should anyone wish to speak, please complete the request to speak form, which is also located in the lobby table next to the sign in sheet. A request to speak form must be completed for each item which you would like to speak on, including sub-items. Please note that there are stairs on the right, the left, and the center aisle, and we ask that you use caution when using these stairs. There's also a ramp located at the audience's left. If anyone has written comments, exhibits, petitions, photos, or letters they intend to present at today's meeting, uh, please have 17 copies. Give them to the staff member in the back of the auditorium she's got her hand up. Uh, if you do not have 17 copies, uh, you may use the table with the overhead camera next to the podium to present your document. If you want your document to go on record, you must hand them to the clerk after the presentation with the agenda item clearly marked on the document. Members of the public cannot speak to staff members in the front that, uh, that because of microphones. Uh, if you have any questions, please see the staff member in the uh, back of the auditorium. They'll meet you in the lobby to discuss your matter. Staff members, uh, please raise your hands. Thank you. Uh, a timer will be activated and all speakers will be limited to two minutes uh, to make their presentations and statements. Um, everyone, please turn off your cell phones and pagers or place them on vibrate during the meeting. If you must receive a call, please leave the meeting area and go outside uh, to have your conversation. We also ask the audience refrain from talking with anyone during the presentations and discussion. Today's Planning and Zoning Commission will hear public testimony and then forward the recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. The items with recommendations made by the Commission will be heard by the Board of Supervisors on October 15th at 9.30 a.m. in this same location with the exception of any continued items. Everyone attending the meeting is asked to remember that the administrative building and campus are tobacco-free areas, which means there is no smoking allowed curb to curb. Also, only bottled water is allowed in the auditorium. No food, soda, coffee, etc., is allowed in the auditorium. If, uh, uh, if there's any items remaining on the agenda, the commission will break for lunch at, uh, at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, approval of last month's minutes. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review them? Uh, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, consent agenda. Do we have a motion or does anybody want to pull anything? I'll make a motion to approve for a staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item number two. Item two is an evaluation of a re re request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 402-16037 from an RE10A residential recreation 10-acre minimum lot size zone to AR1A and AR4A, agricultural residential one and four acre minimum lot size zones to allow creation of residential parcels in the scenic vicinity. <coughs> staff recommends approval of the proposed rezone uh, subject to the conditions of the staff report. Thank you. Is the applicant present? The applicant is not present. There are no speakers. Any questions or comments of the commission? 
Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve per staff recommendation. A second. We have a motion to approve and a second uh, on item number two. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item number three. Item three is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel numbers 224-29-015L, 015M, and 015N from an R112M single-family residential 12,000 square foot minimum lot size zone to an RE residential recreation zone to reestablish prior zoning in the South Mojave Valley vicinity um, and staff recommends approval as indicated in the staff report. There are 12 letters in support of this item. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Uh, would you like to address the commission? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, honorable commissioners, um, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. My name is Michael Mangana, and I'm here for myself and Mike Owen. 311 Jones Drive, Lake Havasu City, Arizona. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, what is the purpose of your rezoning? Are you, what are, what's your goal and objective? What are you trying to do? Um, well, all the lots along here are zoned RE. And um, at the time when we um, zoned them to R112, uh, we were concerned we didn't have the area to have legal RE lots, but we do now with the um, <clears throat> claiming of the accretion land. So we want to go back to um, RE. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions of the speaker? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve according to the restrictions. I'll second. We have a motion um, to approve <coughs> item number three. Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number four. Item four is an evaluation of a request for a zoning <coughs> use permit on a portion of assessor's parcel number 21026092A for a residence in a C1 neighborhood commercial zone in the Golden Shores vicinity. Staff recommends approval of the proposed zoning use permit as indicated in the staff report. I did have a phone call this morning from the applicant. Apparently there's some high water down at uh, the Golden Shores area. They weren't sure they would be able to make it to the meeting today. So I, I don't know if they will be present or not. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is the applicant present? <laughs> Apparently they got uh, flooded in. <laughs> um, any questions or comments from the commission? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve following staff recommendations. Second. We have a motion to approve item number four. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, item number five. Item five is an evaluation request for a zoning use permit on a portion of assessor's parcel number 2213057 for a shooting range in an RE10A residential recreation 10 acre minimum lot size zone in the boundary cone vicinity. Staff recommends approval uh, as indicated in the staff report. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Okay, uh, would you like to address the commission? I Actually, I've got a couple questions, so why don't you come up, please. Uh, please state your name. Uh, Zen Makarski, Arizona Game and Fish. Um, this parcel that they've got there, I I'm thinking that all the land around there is either state or federal land, is that B correct? BLM, yes. yes. BLM, okay. Uh, and doesn't appear to be any residences for two or three miles. I'm just wondering, I've seen some of the drawings here. Uh, what's the, the backdrop for this? Uh, 
uh, well, I'm not, I'm not the expert on that okay. area, but yeah, they're going to build up berms all the way around once construction begins. Okay. And do you guys have a problem with this? No. no. Okay. Okay. Any questions uh, or comments from the commission? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. A uh, question I have is the sound. Uh, it seems like it's right alongside of that the road that goes to Oldman. Right. Uh, extensive sound studies were done. Okay. Uh, and it is minimal. Okay. It seems like in you know, one of the stipulations of the staff was like a sound wall or sound barrier or something. Is that correct, staff? Uh, could you repeat the. Is there any provision uh, submitted with the application for uh, controlling the sound if there is any? The uh, uh, Commissioner's Army, Mr. Mr. Chairman, there was nothing really provided to us about the sound studies that have been done. <coughs> this, um, uh, I, I don't have that information. Well, they uh, said that it was extensively done, so you didn't get a copy of it, or uh, no, it was not included in our in our packet. It's not a, a piece of information that's normally requested, but uh, um. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is there going to be a limitation, John, on the type of uh, weapons uh, that are going to be uh, used out there, or is there a limitation on the explosives? Or, Mr. Chairman, there's nothing in the current uh, <coughs> recommendations. If the commission is inclined to add another condition, uh, they can certainly do so. Okay, I'm just thinking uh, someone going out there with a. M60 or a cannon or something, I don't know. I, I just, you know, kaboom. Um, I can probably get you the, the sound studies that were done. I know they did uh, shotgun, rifle, handgun, I believe, okay. and they, they measured sound from distances away from the shooting range. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be, uh, we can probably put that in, in our motion, but I think that might be something that the, we should probably have at the county level so that we, we know exactly what's going on and if, if all of a sudden there's complaints filed by anybody, at least we've got driving some backup by. on it. Is that a driving by? You know, yeah, I yeah. So. Uh, may I ask why that wasn't shared with the county? I have no idea. Yeah, he's from Fish and Game, so he's probably not in the loop on game that. And, game well, they probably talked to Jay, you. Jay Cook, who is the shooting range coordinator, was planning to be here, but he had other engagements he had to participate in. So I offered to at least come and sit in with all of you. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Any other questions? This is going to be a public Yes, program? it is. And, and uh, we'll provide uh, law enforcement an area to go practice as well. And this is going to be uh, run by Game and Fish, right? Uh, Game and Fish will have the property. It will be run by Tri-State. Um, oh, Tri-State. I, I can't remember the name, but it's uh, essentially a, a group of people will run the shooting range for Arizona Game and Fish. Are they um, modeling this somewhat after the other the game, the game, uh, gun range that's already out there near Seven Oatman? Kilometers. Seven Mile? Yes. Uh, my understanding is, yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit smaller than that. Well, they're going to shoot. Okay. Because I know that when they were looking at it, someone I had been out there and they would said something about they had come out and taken some specs and stuff from there to see how they had set it up for their noise and background. So. Right. Berms play a big, right. a big role in that. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve uh, per staff recommendation with the condition that the study would be provided to the uh, staff to be reviewed by the Board of Supervisors later. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second for item number five. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Item number six. <coughs> <coughs> Item six is an evaluation of a request for a zoning use permit on assessor's parcel number 30607038B 
for secondary residents in an AR, agricultural residential, one acre minimum lot size zone in the Golden Valley vicinity. Uh, you have a, uh, an amended staff recommendation. We received a request from the applicant uh, to use a larger uh, secondary residence based on the uh, needs of the intended occupant. Um, we have a, a couple of questions we need to ask the applicant to get some information into the record. Um, and uh, if those uh, things can be put in the record, uh, staff would recommend approval of the the uh, amended staff rec that was presented to you this morning in your folder. Okay, thank you, John. I'm assuming you're the applicant? I'm uh, the son. It's okay. my mother's place. Please state your name. My father is deceased. Uh, Vern Friesen. Okay, is the applicant present? Yes, she is right here. Okay. Um, John, we had some issues that we need to housekeeping. Yes. Uh, one of the requirements for going to a 75% maximum is a, a statement from the applicant that they have made a, a concerted effort to uh, do something, uh, to find something within the normal 50%. Uh, I guess we would like the applicant yeah. to explain um, why the 50% is too limiting and what efforts they've made to find yeah. a facility that, of that size. I think we need to have the applicant come down also, if you don't mind, ma'am. I can probably explain that, Bill. Um, yeah, I know, but you know, the county wants no problem. the actual applicant to make the statements. John, you continue? State fire. Uh, state fire. Oh, ma'am, could you please state your name? Freddie Friesen. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want me to restate? If the, you would, John, please. Okay. Uh, can you explain what uh, what efforts were made to find a uh, a residence that would fit within the 50% rule, uh, basically 700 square feet or less? Uh, were you able to find any uh, any residences that would fit that uh, size and the the needs of the resident? Of the no, um, it would have had to been a single wide, and uh, it's got to be a handicapped residence, so. Uh, it would have to have two bedrooms, a large bathroom, and well, handicap everything, you know. So it's pretty hard finding something like that. So it's going to have to be built. Specifically built for you? Yes, sir. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. <coughs> I was sprayed over in Vietnam with uh, Agent Orange and a couple other different chemicals, and it's uh, having some effect on my body. And uh, not too far in the future, I'm going to be in a wheelchair. We had a couple more things, John. Okay. Uh, basically, the the uh, um, the second item I, th I think has already been covered, and that's that uh, uh, due to the uh, um, the uh, needs of the occupant, the uh, incre increased size is necessary to ensure health, safety, and welfare. Is that that's correct? correct? Uh, third, that uh, the secondary re unit will remain subordinate to the primary. Yes. Okay. Uh, the fourth is that uh, if there's an on-site septic system, uh, it will be of adequate size and that there is room on the lot to install a second system. Going to put a second system on, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's plenty of room to do it. Have you already applied for your permit for that? I'm in the process of doing it right now. I have a okay. paperwork. Well, I think this is the first step on that. Yeah. I just um, wanted to make sure this was passed before I went and started. You know, secondary residence, you cannot, it's got to be for a family member, can't charge rent, that kind of stuff. No, it would be for me. Okay. Okay. All right. I know. Uh, any additional questions? Mr. John? I Mr. think that pretty well covers. Me. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zami. Uh, is this going to be a, a VA grant? Is it going to be a VA grant? Uh, no, I'm going to do it myself. It is going to be a VA grant, you said? No. No, no, it's not. Okay. I'm going to do it myself. Well, the reason I was asking I because if it, it did. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, because if it was a VA grant, they had their own set of inspections and, you know, requirements that they have to have. 
Okay, so you're going to be just building it out of your own financial and everything? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Any additional questions? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, uh, John, so they have to go through the process of the building permits and review on the whole nine yards. Oh, right? yes. Yeah. Okay, so you, you know about that, right? Yeah. I've been in construction for 30 years myself, but I've been working uh, already together with the uh, building department, the inspectors and stuff, uh, making sure everything is proper. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. That'd be it. Uh, I believe so. Uh, any additional questions, comments? I'll entertain a motion. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll make a motion to approve per staff recommendation. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve item number six. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Could we clarify that that's approval of the alternative staff recommendation for the 75%? That was per staff recommendation. That's what. Oh, we have two staff recommendations. Oh, do you have two? So yeah, they had a supplemental. So. Uh, Should I make my motion again? Let's uh, let's reopen that and uh, restate the motion, please. Okay. Do we need to call? Do we need to vote to reopen, or are we okay? Well, I think. Uh, well, we already took a motion, so um, let's... Uh, I'll make a motion to open the... Right, item. why don't you do that? Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion to reopen item number seven, or six. Aye. In favor? All in favor? Signify aye. for saying aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right, that's all right. Okay. You want to restate your motion, yeah. please? <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve per staff recommendation with the uh, alternative suggested a few minutes ago. Okay. Thank you. Second. We have a motion to approve item number six. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries again. Uh, item much. number seven, thank you very much. Item seven is an evaluation of a request for a rezone of assessor's parcel number 31757018 from a C2H 36A general commercial highway frontage 36 acre minimum lot size zone to a C2H general commercial highway frontage zone to bring the parcel into compliance with zoning in the White Hills vicinity. Staff recommends approval of the proposed rezone as indicated in the staff report. Thank you. Is the applicant present for item number seven? Yes. Thank you. Uh, would you like to address the commission? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Do you mind coming up, Sid? <clears throat> My name is Sid Cranston, Dunright Engineering, 704 East Beale Street, Kingman. Mr. Zami? Um, thank you. I see a lot of improvements on this uh, site. Do you know which part was permitted or went through the proper channel to get the permits? Which part was not? Um, I, I see a lot of improvements there. You know? Well, as far as the history of the property, I, I don't know um, like where the, the greenhouse came from and, and how it sort of evolved to what it is. But I do know that, um, that there was a, uh, a, a previous site plan that was put in uh, in 2001 which which was approved and then that never happened there was uh, then in 2006 we have a resolution number yeah I've read that 571 so then it the the rezone was approved back then and it expired because nothing happened of course it was 2006 followed by uh, Lehman Brothers and everything else in the world and you know the sky was falling and here we are, 2012, and we have people that are ready, willing, and able to, to try to do something in that area. Uh, I have a question for the staff. Uh, could you define, I mean, define, you know, which part was permitted? I mean, all these things that you see on the site, I mean, it seems like... A lot of activity. A lot of activities, and I don't know if there was just, it's some, you know, 2006, they got uh, the resolution, but Obviously, by then, we had a county that had a building department that they could have uh, pulled the permits and approach, and it seems that's what I need to know. Uh, Commissioner's Army, Mr. Chairman, um, 
I, d I don't have a lot of uh, specific information on each individual structure that's there. There is a uh, basically a, a manufactured home sitting there that I believe was established as a sales office for a manufactured home uh, sales. And, and so that part, uh, I believe there was a, a permit for it. Um, some of the other things on that property may, well like the greenhouse, they may have been done under uh, an agricultural exemption or uh, it may have been done prior to permitting requirements. I, I really don't know. There's a lot of older stuff there. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That it seems uh, like you're saying may, and we don't know for sure what is in place right now with the county. It seems like the way I look at it, and I looked at your documents, I didn't see anything validating uh, all the improvements there. So it seems like they went out there and you know th they disregarded the county uh, permitting process altogether. I can't answer that. Uh, Perhaps Ms. Ballard can ad address it. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, uh, before I answer this question, I need to be clear that from this room, I have access to part of our record system. We have part of our record system that is electronic that I have access to. We also have the older stuff, the stuff from you know the 1980s and the 1970s are paper, and those I do not have access to, and I would have to bring that information back to you at a later date. On the electronic system, it appears that in the year 2000, there were two permits issued for the property. Uh, one was for a modular sales office, the other was for a sign. But really, it's already zoned C2H36, so all we're doing is taking the 36 off, and, and uh, this is what, a 10 acre parcel? It's five acre parcel. Five acre, five acre okay. parcel, and, yeah. And I, that's I, exactly. I, so it's already zoned C2H, it's just a matter of where it's kind of a, like a house cleaning thing on, this, on the 36 acre minimum. Yeah, to some degree, I think if you take a look at one and two, there's a, there's a stepped process yeah. whereby one of those conditions brings the, the property into conformance so they can develop it as it is. There's also a provision that allows them to split it if they meet the remainder of the conditions in the, uh, in the, in, in the recommendation. Um, as, you know, as am amended as the commission may desire. Yeah, well they would have to come back if they wanted to split it up any further than the five, right? Uh, actually, I believe that. Um, I missed something here. Yeah. The first condition um, that says the property will be con uh, condition number <coughs> two says the property will be conditionally rezoned to C2H1A co uh, general commercial highway frontage one acre minimum lot size, which shall not become effective until a parcel plat prepared in accordance with Chapter 7 of the Minor Land Division of the Mojave County Land Division Regulations and 102.01-3 of the standard specifications and details has been recorded. So number two would allow them, upon the filing of a parcel plot, to split down to one acre. Okay. Any questions or comments from the Commission? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move that it be approved according to the conditions set forth by staff. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item number seven. Uh, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. No. Motion carries. Item number eight. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes. I need to make this myself. Okay, please. thank you. Item eight is an evaluation of a request for a zoning use permit on assessor's parcel number 317550404 for a helicopter landing site on a C2H general commercial highway frontage zone in the White Hills vicinity. Staff recommends approval of the proposed zoning use permit as indicated in the staff report. Uh, there are seven letters in opposition, three in support. Thank you. Is the applicant present? We have several speakers uh, on the item. Would you like to speak now or later? Later, probably. Okay. Uh, Mark? Uh, <coughs> simple? 
think. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Commissioners. Mark Sipple is pairing as counsel for the Triangle Air Park. Please state your name. Mark Sipple. I'm sorry. At 707 Just East Beale Street. And I commend you for the work that you have. You've got tough decisions, but the essence and the foundation that you have to build on is a full, fair, truthful, complete disclosure and information. It's not enough to get a narrow piece when you have issues of intrusion, congestion, public safety, uh, as to not just the people around the property, but also prospective visitors to our community from all over the world. There's coordination issues with master planning and concepts, and there's impingement on pre-existing uses. Uh, brief story my father taught me well. He said, you have the freedom on your property and your affairs to wave your arms however you want, but that freedom stops at your neighbor's face. In this case, uh, we don't believe the commission and the staff got the full disclosure. The BOS 12046 that was approved in April is a pre-existing approved use that was not presented in here. The Triangle Air Park has vintage aircraft, no radio towers, no radios in some of the airplanes and the uses there. Uh, the question of private use versus actual commercial bringing people in is a question. There have been other site turndowns, Rosie's Den for one. There's another separate runway, and so it's being piecemealed into here. And from and after my letter of submission to the packet, which I would make reference to, I'm, I'm sure that you all looked at that, um, there's been new revelations. The FAA was not given disclosure. Their approval letter is in peace and does not have any of those additional pieces of information. A machine gun range out there, I've heard violations of that. And anybody knows a machine gun goes up in the air, across airplane traffic, across all these other helicopter traffic issues. Uh, this is just insufficient information for this commission to even begin to address its obligations under safety, public use, et cetera. So we would ask that this be uh, denied. In the alternative, if you're going to uh, consider it, delay it for further information because that's what the game is. We need to know for the safety and for the development growth of the county and okay. consistent with the other letters. Uh, you, you mentioned in violation, uh, in violation of, uh, of what? Violation of county codes, FAA codes, uh, the huh? FAA was fire department. fire department. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to figure out. I mean, people come up and say everybody's in violation, but you know, I, I, we need specifics rather than just, you know, can you identify what they're actually in violation of? <clears throat> I'm not clear as memory what I said that violation was. I apologize. Um, well, we need to know what you're talking about. If they're in violation, if if they're not in violation, then they're not in violation, and we need to chat with staff and see if there's anything that uh, that's been uncovered or should have been uncovered okay. so the the failure to bring forth those other uses and the failure with the FAA to disclose the other right to me that's a, a violation of the fundamental trust and integrity to come to this commission to ask for affirmative positive you know development of a property okay. that the, the FAA is, is sent a, a letter of approval so I'm trying to figure out you know, we, we have no control over the FAA. We just, that's, that's a whole different issue with us. Uh, Very true, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman. However, the FAA was not given the same sets of information uh, with the other turndowns in the area. We now have, what, three airports in the same general facility here, and you're asking to be approving one small piece without connection to uh, all of the others. We think that that is a, uh, a failure of investigation of presentation by the applicant. As a chairman? Yes. Uh, so what you're saying is that, you know, FAA uh, did not know about the other three airports? That is correct. Their oh, application, you can read their application and there's nothing in there about that. I believe Ms. Uh, Tackett-Hicks has uh, further information having spoken directly with the FAA personnel. Well, I can understand about the application, but FAA, if you read their letter, they, is, you know, and, you know, this is the federal, it takes time and get through the whole thing. Did you, have you had the opportunity to review the FAA letter? reviewed it extensively and that so. was part of my recommendations that you know that be adopted also the recommendations and a further clarification of what private versus private commercial private use uh, means um, 
Okay. As I said, Nick, I think Ms. Ms. Hicks maybe has we'll, further information on that. I think what we need to do, because you mentioned uh, Kathy Taggart Hicks, maybe she's got some insight there because uh, obviously you're unable to answer a couple of the questions that we've got. So uh, thank you. You're welcome. Kathy? Good morning, Honorable Chairman, Commissioners. My name is Kathy Tackett Hicks. Uh, I do have some additional information, and I think you should have received a, a last minute email letter from the applicant or an adjacent property owner across the street. I previously processed, and you approved a heliport location uh, right across the street from this. We were open, we met with the property owners, we met with this particular property owner. And what Mark was alluding to is that I did speak with the FAA myself. Um, and asked if they were aware of our approval, and he said no. And, and that's very offensive, quite frankly, because we processed this before that. And what drew it all to, um, into question was this drawing. This drawing right here shows um, what they submitted and what the FAA approved. And if you look right... That's the flight path. Down here at that, right, at that <coughs> triangle, that's exactly where we had our heliport approved, okay? And, and we were open. We spoke with the owner across the street for last stop. So there's no deceit. There was nothing intended for that. I was very surprised they weren't aware of it because I think it can still all work together. It's just that that flight plan cannot go over that. In addition, the approval letter from the FAA indicated that the Triangle Air Park, they had to be aware of um, that runway. Now, I don't know Triangle Air Park that clearly, but there's, their auxiliary runway is in direct conflict with this as well. That's, it's this one right here. And so I'm wondering if um, there, there was a failure to fully understand the situation. They have a main runway and they have that auxiliary. And these flight patterns that they approved conflict with that. So um, we were running around trying to figure out, I do not come before you all the time and request a denial of anything. But if this gets approved, this um, is going to create, you know, null and void your, our previous approval where we have an actual helicopter service coming in and setting that up. And with these ap applications, there's, there are numerous approvals required. So we did not, I want, I would like you to please direct them to have the FAA at least understand that there's a, a approval across the way so that a flight plan can be done that everybody can work with. In addition, you have the communication issue and Mark was talking about other runways, and they have applied for an airport runway south and west of this. And what that is going to create, he was talking about a piecemeal issue, is there's going to be so much congestion in that area that communication, although in the FAA says it's highly recommended, it probably should be required because it's going to be, it's going to be too much in that area. I think everybody can live together. But if the FAA is not aware of everything going on, then... You know, that's a problem. And deceit's not required, you know. Well, so. Phoenix is congested. I'm not sure about White Hills being congested that much, right. but. Right, but in this, uh, let me show you another picture. No, not this one. Anyways, the runway goes right along that backside as well. Right. And they're still processing that. Again, everyone, it's all fine. But the FAA has to understand what's in that area, what was already approved before they can you know, they may adjust some of these. I spoke with the FAA guy. Nice guy, he flat out told me I had no idea, and I was shocked. And so I let the operator and the owner of the property across the street understand that, because if this were approved as it is, then his approval from you guys on the board would be unable to be processed by the FAA. So that was the issue. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, Kathy, definitely, I don't believe I have the qualification about, you know, the flight pattern and all that. Right. I don't know about the rest of the commission here. Right. But, you know, we have to rely on FAA. Right. So you're saying that, you know, the same question I asked the other gentleman, uh, FAA reviewed this site plan, I assume, and the application. And uh, the other airports, my assumption is that they went through the same process. So you're saying FAA, FAA do not or did not consider all those airports within the vicinity of this? I, I know that the FAA did not consider my heliport site across the street. That's what I know for Mr. a fact. Mr. Chairman? Yes. But I did not check all of the other areas. I, yes, sir. I'm a 35-year I'm a private pilot. 
<laughs> and um, I know cases in the past, I'm not currently um, applying, but I know from cases in the past that there have been situations like this where the FAA put something forward and there was no consideration for something else because they really didn't know what was going on. I mean, that's my own personal. 35 years I've been doing this. So I'm not um, saying that anything has to stop. I think all entities can work together, but I think there is going to be a serious communication issue, which the FAA did identify in here, and uh, the fact that they should at least be aware that there is a, uh, a previous approval for the same type of use across the street, because as this flight pattern goes over it. So, so let me let me ask you this, because uh, I'm going to ask staff too. But uh, so what you're saying is. We should probably, uh, or uh, you're proposing we continue this and have the FAA reevaluate this? Is that what you're asking? Well, I don't think they have to do a complete reevaluation, but they certainly should be aware of the information. They should be aware of that. This property owner, um, Austin Williams, is very upset about it because he's had contact with them, and the fact that the FAA did not know that that was there is very uh, upsetting and um, borders on deceitful, and it doesn't have to be that way. Well, the FAA's so letter I, says that this letter that they wrote is in response to the all the opposition letters. So, pardon me. Yeah. Oh, I, I, all I have is an approval letter, August 29th, that I got about a week ago. That's the only one I have from the FAA. That's, that's the that's, that's the letter. It that's says cool. very clearly, if you recall, or, you read it, yeah. this letter from FAA is essentially in response uh, to the opposition. The primary concern uh, from the standpoint of the FAA is the issue of safety. In their depth, right. in their depth review of our application along with the site visit by a qualified inspector indicates that a proposal is a safe one. That's yeah, which FAA. is great. And but I'm telling you that he did not know that there's a heliport approved across the street, and that's all that I bring to your attention. But weren't some of the letters of opposition identifying this heliport that you're talking about, Kathy? I have no I, we did not write. I don't any, know. I'm we have just not, asking. We did not write any opposition letters to his heliport, from from my perspective or the property owner on this site. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, Kathy, who did you talk to at FAA? Marty Ray, the uh, gentleman in the letter well, who reviewed the site. Okay, so the gentleman who signed it, I guess, is David it's Cushing. David Cushing, right? He's so, out of the LA office. Yeah, he's the manager. So you haven't talked to David? No, Marty Ray is based out of Vegas. He's the one that did the actual site inspection. <coughs> He's a nice guy. Well, no, I'm not talking about that being nice or not. Right. But, uh, you know, basically what you're asking uh, the commission to do is to, in a way, deny this, but yet across the street you're going to have your own project with the same helipad and all that? No, I'm not asking that. I'm asking you to tell this uh, applicant to go to FAA and tell them that there's another site across the street that was already approved and that their flight plan just has to incorporate that. It will not deny either of them. So your site is already approved by FAA? Not yet. Okay, no. so these guys but are... But it is approved by you guys. So these guys are one step ahead of you? Is that what's going on? They're I mean, a step ahead of us in the FAA and a step behind us at the county for land use. Well, FAA, uh, once you make your, I, I don't know how FAA works, yeah. but uh, I'm just assuming that it's just like everything else, there's step one, step two, step three to, to get your approvals, but it would seem to me that they don't even know about yours. Right, so, that con I confirm that And, and I understand yeah. that. So they would probably have to amend their flight pattern. Right. Uh, once you make a submission, it's hard for us to say no to somebody when when you haven't even submitted it to the FAA yet. Well, I think the issue is going to be all I wanted was their approval to not be directly over this site. All they have to do is modify this so that it doesn't become, you know, the record. Because but, how can I go that, up and that's down? That's my point. Over? FAA yeah. is the only one that can do that, Kathy. So if they're, right. I mean, we, we can't do anything about that. And I, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, uh, and we've run across this stuff before where people didn't go through the process and uh, of getting certain approvals done, but someone wants to jump ahead of them and somebody doesn't want them to jump ahead of them because somebody else didn't get something done. And, and that's, that, I guess that's my point here is I think maybe in your application, when you file your application, and this is kind of out of our realm of expertise, maybe Bob knows more about this, but uh, you're the one that's going to have to ask to amend the flight path, not us. 
or even the applicant, because the applicant probably has no desire to do that at this point because there's no other application in there. Mr. Chairman, yes. is it the, the uh, flight plans that you just showed us, those are the appro your approved flight plans? No, that's the approved uh, application for across street for heli, heli uh, last stop, I'm sorry. There's no, there's no application for this particular, for flight plans for this particular airport, for this helipad. For the, the correct. The, the, so we got, we just did a different processing. And you know, I know all about processing for 20 years, 20 different agencies. So I have no problem with the issue of someone going ahead or anything. My main problem is that application they submitted to FAA and received an approval did not include all the information it should have. That's where I have a major problem and where it becomes offensive. But, but, but that's but, my point is, is if they didn't know that you were going to make your application, why would they put it in their application if you hadn't filed an application? I mean, I'm, that's well, every, my we've been point. very open, so that's not an issue. That, that's not an issue. And when they look at surrounding land uses and stuff, we always have to incorporate that, Mr. Fluche. I'm just saying. I thought it was kind of deceitful. I wish you would ask them to please, you know, include that and ask if the FAA has any concerns, because I think what will happen is they will say, okay, you know. We'll get our formal application, and all we want you to do is make sure that you don't have a flight plan that goes over this. Yes, we recognize that there's already a land use approved for that. That's, that's what they're going to say. And you guys should recognize that you have a land use approval already done that you thought was fine, and the one across the street should be able to work with it. But if you do approve this the way it is, then that means that you've selectively said, well, okay, you know, yours is not going to work because I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to work with this flight plan that goes right over it. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Kathy, could you give me, uh, what, what was the reason that, you know, you didn't concurrently approach FAA because you know the process, you said you've done this before. Yeah. Uh, so well. when you were working with the county, uh, it seems like the other uh, client or the other people, they did concurrently went to FAA and they got the approval. In your case, uh, it seems like, you know, you didn't take that a step or your client right. did not take that a step. What was the reason? What was the reason that they then, you know? Well, probably several. One, it's not required to, to take that step when I process the land use. It's just a strategy of approvals, Mr. Zarmi. So they wanted the land use to make sure that that was going to be good. We have spoken with the last stop owner. There's no, I mean, we've been completely open, which is why this is so shocking. Uh, um, and so we know before we do that, at some point, Heli USA, who's the uh, commercial provider on this site, We'll have to do that. They already have existing approvals with uh, the FAA, so we did not think this was going to be a big deal. And it won't be, although Last Stop is a new provider with a new commercial, so their process is going to be much more because they're not established. Hell USA has been serving in the area for 10 or 15 years. You know, it's a, just a different process. So our risk factor with the FAA was a lot lower than actually getting our land use approval. So it was just a strategy. Um, Kathy, so basically your client is asking us to stop this project because uh, their project, which is not filed with the FAA, has a conflict in their uh, path? Our, the client is just asking that you make sure that this applicant lets the FAA know that there is one across the street. I know, but Be is it their responsibility to do that? Yes, it is. But I mean, you know, I you haven't filed with FAA. There is an existing land use, and it clearly in here it also states as one of the conditions they must comply with all the county uh, requirements, zoning, land use, environmental, stuff like that. So all of the agencies recognize you have to go with someone else. And what Mark, wa I think, was trying to relay is that they're just issuing it piecemeal and leaving out some key parts. This is a key part. Uh, my, I, guess I, I know. I, I'm, I'm just saying. I, it's like, you know, I'm trying to figure out here if... if uh, uh, if, if we have the applicant go back to the FAA and say, listen, uh, we know there's something else that might come to you sometime in the future, we want you to redo your flight path for those folks. I would think the FAA, once you submit yours, they would change the flight path. Um, and that's where I'm not sure of, which is why I'm asking you to, to ask the FAA, because I believe when you have flight patterns, just like the Triangle Air Park has the existing patterns. The applicant's got to do all the asking. We can't. Um, but, no, I would expect you to expect everyone that comes before you to not have, I mean, that would be like me coming before you and saying, yeah, I knew this was right next door, but I didn't want to let you know. Okay. But, that, but, Kathy, you know a lot of things that over the years 
people talk about a lot of stuff and they never follow through. And that's correct. I, I, I'm just trying to uh, uh, kind of be the devil's advocate here because it's like if you never apply, then they're they're going to have to go to FAA for absolutely no reason unless you file your application. Uh, yeah. Before I don't they go back. I don't expect them to go and have a what if. I expect them to say, for your information, the county, PNZ, and board approved a helipad location at this site. That's all they have to say. There, there's actually nothing more. I spoke with Marty and he said, are you going to submit an application? I said the owner does that through his, you know, commercial stuff through the FAA. Okay. And yes, that will be done. I don't expect them to say. So, so you're saying that FAA knew, well, they do now, obviously, that we had already previously approved a helo pad across the street. He they found out that. on Monday when I told him. He was not aware when he looked at the evaluation for his, which is my only problem with all of it. Okay. But is this, that, this project has been going on for quite some time. I know, we've been. Which project? I mean this, this, this application. This whole area. Yeah, which is fine. Which, why, why it completely blows my mind for the past five months, they've known we have a helipad, why they didn't give the simple courtesy I mean, and no, process point is of that letting you had ample opportunity. I mean, your client had ample opportunity to negotiate with FAA and do this uh, neighbor to work it out about all the if details. If we knew before Monday that it wasn't considered as part of their application, we made the assumption that the FAA application included this. So you assumed that they had yeah, that they already knew it. And until we get the approval saying, wait, time out. Okay, but uh, let me ask you this, Kathy, because you've been in our position before. Uh, our jurisdiction, as you know, is the land use, not Correct. the FAA. Correct. We don't know, we, don't, we cannot, you know, consider the FAA ruling right. or whatever. So in terms of the land use, uh, you know, the way I see it before us, uh, the client or the people that are applicant here, uh, they have the right to ask us for the land use. And yes, they do. And then uh, you do have like about 30 days to go to the Board of Supervisors, you know, to maybe get the attention of FAA with your case and be able to maybe come up with a, a stronger position against this uh, application. Isn't it the case or I'm, I'm missing something? Well, yeah, we can still work on it. I just um, think that the FAA to make a decision just like you guys would need all the information. And so, yeah, of course, we'll follow up and see if that can be done. Well, All I think I we asking, have a lot of the information, Kathy. It's just that your client has never filed an application with the FAA, and, and that needs to happen. That's really that what needs happen. to happen, uh, you know, uh, forthwith, because depending upon what we do here, it, you're going to have to have some ammunition to go to the Board of Supervisors or get the FAA to rewrite a letter or do something uh, in, in that 30 day period of time between here and the Board of Supervisors. I guess that's what we're trying to. We're trying no, I, to, I understand this is a crazy issue and you say you have a, a right only with land use and I would I guess pose to you and say well you purpose, you did approve one already. Yeah. So how come you're approving this one knowing that, that it, it creates okay. a null and void on the other one? Yeah, but I mean, uh, I mean if it's okay. a land use you can have it on one side of the road, you can have you the can, other side. You can, you uh, can. So? That's what I'm, uh, I'm comfortable okay. with that. I think, thank you Kathy, I think we've, we've got Mr. this. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, Mr. Taylor, maybe you could help us a little bit. We have before us a recommendation from the county to approve. We have objections that don't seem to fit into any of the criteria of the approval. Uh, can you? Commissioner uh, Morbido, what, uh, the county's uh, jurisdiction here is over the land use issue. You've made a determination that the site across the, the street is, is appropriate for that type of use. You've, um, you have before you a question of whether or not the the applicant side is also appropriate. Uh, I think uh, what um, Ms. Hicks, Ms. Tackett Hicks stated was that it could be, from a land use perspective, both sides could support that type of use. Yeah. You have a, a potential conflict over the use of the airspace that's governed by the FAA. This commission does not have the authority to, right. um, you know, to, to impose restrictions or if, if it makes sense from a land use perspective, the determination of the appropriate allocation of airspace should be made by the FAA. Um, well, I guess part of the whole thing is, is when we rezone the other piece over there, none of these issues seem to come into play at all uh, from the activities on the other side of the highway, and now all of a sudden, they are. Well, so, now it's a competitive situation, yeah, which I, we shouldn't be drawn into. I, I don't want to get drawn into I was asking that. for some 
some okay. clarification, because that's what we apparently are being attempted to be brought into picking a side. Okay. And we've, 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 I can talk to the applicant, the, the engineer. Oh, okay. If possible. I mean, you don't sure, that's fine. Speakers. We got two more speakers, so. Okay. Not that tall. Uh, Sid Cranston, uh, Dunright Engineering, 704 East Beale Street. Uh, you heard the argument. Yes, sir. What can you add to this? Um, I apologize that Kathy thinks that uh, we're um, not courteous, and uh, that it certainly was not our intention. Um, I did meet with, with the owners uh, and with Mar Marty K, K-A-Y, for the record, that is his name, who was the inspector. Um, for the uh, Western Pacific region. And we, um, I have nothing in writing. We did talk about uh, the, pr the proposed project across the street. Um, it was very superficial. And I do remember that, uh, that Mr. K's uh, statements were that uh, whenever there's, you know, multiple people kind of that want to do similar items in a similar airspace, that nobody takes precedence. Um, you have to share the airspace. Um, we have fantastic abilities for uh, communications. Uh, you know, in fact, there's an item in the letter of approval. If you talk about the letter from FAA, from the FAA, yeah. um, it is a determination with respect to the safe and efficient use of navigable airspace by aircraft, and with respect to the safety of persons and property on the ground. And, and it just goes on to say that they should uh, use a common frequency. I didn't highlight the common frequency part, but okay. Item F on the first page. Helicopters using this proposed heliport need to remain well clear of AZ-50's runway 826 traffic pattern. Establishing a common frequency to be used by this proposed heliport and AZ-50 is highly recommended. Um, Obviously, everybody wants to be safe. Uh, we we have uh, a letter of intent from uh, from Maverick, one of the the premier uh, helicopter uh, flight companies uh, based in Las Vegas. Um, obviously, if there's another application that comes in, uh, if the FAA asks us to modify uh, our our landing and takeoff uh, patterns, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, FAA, we, we already established that uh, by the commission that, you know, the FAA is not our jurisdiction. Uh, in terms of your application, there were some comments that, you know, you might have a different application for the land use. Are you going to stay within the application and, you know, comply with all the uh, regulatory agencies like FAA, the Maui County and all that? So those uh, parameters about the shooting range or, you know, things like that does not exist. Is that correct? Oh, there's a shooting range out there. There's an existing shooting range. There's actually a proposal for a second lane of shooting range. Okay. Um, that's been in existence. Um, when uh, Mr. K was out on the site, like, uh, we had lunch in, there, in the restaurant, and there's big advertisements for the shooting range. Uh, so it's already there? Yeah, it's there. And, and okay, one moment. Um, uh, staff, uh, do we have uh, acknowledged, you know, that shooting range there? Do, do they, are they permitted? Or are they, I mean, what's going on? Just yell. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Army, uh, the property that that shooting range is on has, well, the front portion has a C2H zone, the rear is a CRE, commercial recreation, and shooting ranges are an allowed use in CRE. We do have a site plan on it. We do have permits so on they it. They took so. the proper step and it's already established? Yes. Okay, and I assume that that information was shared with, uh, you know, FAA and all that too, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the reasons for the site visit is to see what's going on in the area. Since they brought it up, I just want to make sure you have yes, space on that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, sir. Uh, Vicki uh, uh, Hesslinger? My name is Vicki Hesslinger. I live in White Hills at 8356 West Cordelia Drive. I am here because some of the residents in White Hills have concerns about 
all this activity that's going on. Could you pull that microphone just a little closer? Thank you very Is much. Is that better? Um, there's about 500 families there, and I realize that as you drive down 93, you do not see all those homes. You just see section one. But there's five sections back up in White Hills. And so there's quite a few people involved, and I know that your goal um, is to serve the public, the safety, the comfort, convenience, and the general welfare, which is the zoning definition under section 10, page 20. And our concerns are, is the noise pollution we're going to have, the safety issues, which of course you've already discussed all this, so I won't bring it up, um, the, and the value of our homes. In this area, we are also going to uh, be having this wind farm developed. They're going to be bringing in their helicopters, too. So we really have a lot of activity that, that we have going on there that's, you know, down the road that all this is going to come together at once. And as residents, we just have concerns, and we would like you to be aware of it and take our feelings into consideration. Okay, you, you do know this, that Highway 93 has got like two, 3,000 big trucks going up and down the road every day. Yes, we which do. Is, is, but I'm talking about overhead noise. Yeah, They're no, going to be flying over us. Yeah, I, I just was trying to address the, the noise part of it. I understand. So. And especially if they're going to go to Rosie's or anything or stop in there anyway, they put their Jake brakes on, and that's probably louder than any well, helicopter. Well, right now, I don't know really what's going to happen with Rosie's. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little stop. Uh, but, any but, questions of the speaker? Thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, Chief Mark uh, Rue? Roos? Z. Hello, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, Mark Ruse, I'm the fire chief for Lake Mojave Ranchos Fire District, uh, P.O. Box 611, uh, Dolan Springs, Arizona, 86441. Um, in, in regards to this, uh, my whole job is service delivery, and we don't have any any fire protection in this area at all. So uh, Pierce Ferry Road, 10 miles up Pierce Ferry Road is the closest fire station to the area. We cover the area from the dam all the way south to mile marker 50. Uh, being the new fire chief, I'm trying to increase the service delivery to the area. Um, the owner of the last stop has provided or offered to provide uh, a space, an RV space, and I have an RV. Um, where I can put an ambulance and a fire truck temporarily to uh, service the needs of the people of White Hills and the people of the commercial areas of that area. Um, in addition to that, um, they would also have 24-hour ARF protection if they were to get their, their helicopter pad. So they would have manned, staffed, ALS, paramedic service on site um, if there was to be a helicopter crash on scene, you know, at, at the location. Uh, when we're talking about a helicopter pad that's 60 feet by 60 feet, okay, and helicopters land into the wind and they take off into the wind. There is no flight pan. There is no anything. Once they're up in the air, then they can go wherever they want. But when they take off and they land, they land into the, into the wind and they take off into the wind. So, and generally that wind is out of the southwest. So, um, I've been working out there five years. Um, I have yet to see an airplane take off from that, that airport, period. And uh, frankly, I, I mean, I travel out there every day, and it takes us 40 minutes to respond to the White Hills area, roughly an hour to respond to the dam. Right now, as we speak, I have, I have a, a multi-victim multi accident with 12 people involved at mile marker 5, and it's going to take my guys an hour to get there. So that's an hour that somebody's sitting in a car 
that's either on fire or upside down or flipped over, and it could be any one of us. So anyway, I'm trying to in increase the service delivery to the area, and I'm, the reason I'm supporting it is because it's, it's branching me out. It's bringing me that much closer. It would increase my times by almost 75%, so uh, it would give me the, the ability to be right there. Um, a lot of times we do fly patients that are out on the highway because they are traumatic injuries. A lot of times people are ejected from cars or they're trapped in cars. It takes multiple you know, minutes to take them out of the car, extricate them out of the car, cut them out of the car. Um, and most of those patients are flown to Las Vegas or flown to Kingman for stabilization and then flown to Vegas. So this, this uh, uh, station, is that something in concrete or is that in pencil? Um, it's more or less in pencil. He's he's offered us this area in his RV park in the back, and I have an RV that <coughs> we got under a grant that we haven't used for anything at all. Um, and I thought, what better use for it than to serve the citizens of the of Mojave County? So, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, so, what would be your response time from that location, the RV spot that you're talking about, to White Hills? Uh, roughly eight to ten minutes. Wow. So. And right now we don't have we don't have any any type of contract. There is no they aren't in our fire district, um, and we would we would probably either annex White Hills. You know, based on the on the percentage of growth, we're only allowed to grow 13 percent a year. But based on our the size of our district, which is roughly 22 2300 square miles, um, we might be able to take the whole thing in one one fell swoop. You know, if we were able to to uh, establish a permanent facility out there. So. Um, but the one thing I do want to emphasize is that this heliport, if you do approve it, is going to be the only thing out there that has manned 24-hour airport rescue firefighting protection with Class B foam, and that's period. If What's your time wrong, frame for getting this put together? I could put it together in a week. Okay. That's good. So, and our, our intent isn't to, to make anybody... Uh, you know, upset anybody is to serve, it's to, to better provide a better service to the citizens. And I mean, you know, there's nothing like, I, I've had calls with, with choking babies out in, in, White, in White Hills and it frustrates you when you're on the phone with a person and the baby stops breathing and, you know, you have an ambulance that's racing, you know, it's, it's trying to get there and it's gonna take them 45 minutes or an hour to get there. You know, we've launched a helicopter and an emergency helicopter, I don't need, I don't need a permit, I don't need, an LZ, I don't need anything to land. I can land it wherever I want. Yeah. So, um, but this this particular area, if we did have this LZ, um, would give us a safer environment to land a helicopter. Um, landing, a lot of times in the middle of the night, um, DPS will dispatch one unit um, out to the site. Um, if it's a, a car accident, I have hundreds of pictures. If you'd like to see them, I can bring those in. Um, where we're waiting up to an hour for a DPS unit to arrive, um, and that's just for traffic control. And once an accident happens, it blocks both lanes, the traffic starts to back up, and cars start to hit, you know, and it's just, okay. it causes a chain reaction car accident. Right. So, anyway, I, <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, I have... Any questions of the speaker? Sorry to cut you off there. No. I, I just, uh, I would li I'd like to say that the... Uh, uh, us being able to get the patient and the, and the people off the highway and get the rescue helicopter off the highway and in the LZ, you know, would be a lot safer, so, for the victim, so. That, okay. That's what, what my, why Any I Any uh, questions or uh, comments to, of the speaker? Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Um, any additional comments from the commission? Questions of anybody? No? Okay. I will uh, entertain a motion. All right. From okay. somebody. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to approve for a staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion to approve item number eight. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number nine. Item nine, <clears throat> excuse me. Item nine is an evaluation of a request to grant an extension to determine compliance with the schedule for development 
or to rescind and cause property to revert from CRE commercial recreation zone to the previous zone of AR agricultural residential one acre minimum lot size for failure to meet conditions of approval as specified in BOS resolutions 2004-442, 2006-579, and 2010-220, which proved the rezone and extensions of time for rezone of assessor's parcel number 24501077 in the Yucca vicinity. Staff recommends the BOS resolution numbers uh, 2004 442, 2006-579, 2008-148, and 2010-220 be rescinded and the zoning revert from CRE, commercial recreation, to the previous zone of AR, agricultural residential one acre minimum lot size for fail failure to meet the conditions of approval. Thank you. I'm assuming uh, staff is, this is your item? Uh, correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we have no speakers on the item. Any questions or comments of staff? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to rescind per a staff recommendation. I'll second. We have a motion to uh, rescind per staff recommendations. Item number nine, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, number 10. Number 10 is an evaluation to request an amendment to the Mojave County Zoning Ordinance Section 9 and Section 20 to provide for learning centers and commercial zones. Thank you. All right. Uh, we've talked about this for the last couple of months and uh, Anybody on the commission have any additional thoughts, comments, changes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment changed. No second. We have a motion to approve item number 10. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion carries. Uh, let's see if we've got anything else here. That's it. Uh, I believe so. Any, uh, any additional comments from the commission uh, or announcements or anything from staff? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion that uh, we adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oops, <laughs> almost broke the glass. <laughs> uh, Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. You need his credit card? To <laughs>